Ιωπή. Λεβ Σάχης, ένα πολύ ρεσπέκτευτο τρέινερ τώρα, φυσικά ήταν ο τσάπινος της Σοβιετ Ιούνιον δύο. Now he's back with us. He had a, a very serious problem. He made a liver operation lately, and he was lucky that he's still alive. Yeah, and uh, he escaped the dance, and now he's back in business. Uh, Lepsak is now now days. I mean, the last uh, maybe four or five years, he's working with the Indian uh, national men team. And um, he said that uh, to learn and to play games well, the chess player must love at games. Okay, nobody gets in love with the hard uh, times. So um, one of our main uh, aspects is to uh, give to the trainee the ability to start to love the end games. We must make for them sleep simple. They are hard, but we can present the, the hard part on a simple way, nice way. So generally, we have to separate the games into two categories, the tactical and the strategical. Uh, tactical complex and games generally must be treated as a middle game. As in the middle game, our thoughts are busy with calculation based on the specific characteristic of the position. Uh, but of course, more often in our game, as practice proof, uh, we have the so-called strategic end games. Uh, the end games where even computers have difficulties to find the best move. These are the end games that uh, do not rely so much on calculation. And so it is not from the time of Capablanca that is strategical positional end games. We have to think by plans, by schemes, and variation in calculation is on a secondary role. Uh, first, we have to understand where to put our pieces, to find an idea for improving the position. After we start to form a plan, and this is what we call end game thinking. Thinking correctly in the right order will significantly simplify the process of calculation. So, uh, how to approach the game thinking? How to switch the right pattern on our brain? Uh, the Russian master Sergei Belavenich, a great chess thinker, he give, uh, he give us an advice. After the tactical complication, when our brain is busy with calculation of beautiful variation, blah, blah, exchange of pieces might follow, and some kind of prosaic game arises. This happens in a lot of games. Now, every player has to spend a few minutes, if they clock a lot, of course, just to relax, to calm down the emotions, in order to look differently at the position, the tactical uh, point finished. We have to think differently. This investment of time will pay back later in the game. Okay, this advice, of course, was given before World War II, when uh, they had very different time controls. But still, to switch on the button in your brain, to remember that positional games require a game thinking by schemes, by plans, is quite important. Always we don't forget to respect the opponent's ideas. I told you a lot of times in this seminar that we are not alone in this board. We have an opponent that, believe me, he doesn't want to help me. I used to say to my trainees, there are two ways to play in tournaments. The first one is to be the darling of the tournament. Everybody loves you. They want to socialize with you. They find they want to play with you. You are the most adorable opponent for them. They show each other and say, my point, you know? The other one is everybody to hate you because you beat them. It's up to you. What do you want to be? Okay, something in between will be fine. But usually there is nothing in between. This is what happens. So you play with some opponent that he doesn't want, he doesn't love you, he doesn't want your good. Very simply. It's his business to do that. You cannot uh, really accuse him. He has to do that. So you have to respect, but not fear. 
and of course play to win. Uh, so let's see what this uh, Gurevich means. This is uh, one of his most famous games. Uh, he won against uh, Ulf Anderson, and the times when Ulf Anderson was losing maybe one to two games per year. Okay, I don't feel that he was winning more, but at least the guy was very difficult to beat. Uh, after a tense uh, tactical battle, White won a pub. But uh, this prosaic game arrived. It was time to switch on the game thinking button. First of all, as usual, we must evaluate the power structure. Here it is simple. Just three against two on the same side, no weaknesses. Then we have to see the activity of pieces. The white pieces are not active for the moment. This is what we can understand. So the third one, what pieces I would like to exchange here? What exchanges switch my opponent? Okay, generally white is ready to change both pieces, as power nading must be winning. Black would love to change any pair of pieces, but not both. You see, there are two opponents, they want two different things. Normal. Fourth. How to proceed? What is my plan? Okay, I have to improve my pieces generally, develop them to better, more active position and probably to the center. Fifth, what is the plan of my opening? Not any big threats or ideas for the moment. Black is just to try to control the center to defend here. Okay, you see, till now we have some simple thingy. Uh, but it's enough for the moment. Of course, as white, we don't want to spend the, the time now trying to look too far. It's time to play something. And you see how it's going to develop. We, have the, we, we evaluate the position, we thought about it, uh, how to, to proceed. And the main thing what we came about is that the only one we can think about it here is to centralize the piece and create some threats. Slowly, slowly. We are not in danger to bladder something very difficult. Ah, Gurevich is here, maybe he can help us in analyzing the game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Obviously, he's a little bit angry. Maybe his kids are not made some good results. <laughs> so. Okay. Queen E1. Everybody will say, well, why are you are showing us this game? I mean, why do we have to win by that? It's boring, isn't it? I'm sure if you had a chess board and you have to look for this game, all these moves now, you will say, well, I'm doing it here. Okay, but don't forget that chess, after all, is a battle. A battle of ideas, a battle of two opponents. This means we have to prevail over our opponent. It means that we have to create something. If we cannot create immediately something, we can take our time, as White is doing here. He plays some moves, and he wants to see how to improve the position. He wins some time on the clock. Uh, he, he, and, you know, it's very difficult for Black all the time to defend this position. The draw seems to be all the time so near, but so far. 
Okay. Now he wants to go the knight on the 3. The knight on the 3 is obviously a better piece, better in the center. Okay, knight d5 prevents the knight. But now a pin. Knight d3 now because he has no other better move. Knight d5 was more stubborn. You remember what we said about black? He, he would like to exchange one pair of uh, pieces, but not both of them. So he should try. He's waiting. Not much is going on. Okay, some moves he was playing. Now it's time to improve something. Okay, we played many moves. F3. He takes the e4 square under control. And the fact, of course, doesn't force his opponent to resign, but makes him happier somehow. At least the next idea is to activate the pieces farther to take them to more attacking position on the fifth rank. That's an idea. To bring the knight on a 5 to knight to e5. Saturn is a plan, an idea, a schematic thing. You see, you beat the guy who is 26 plus, at that moment he was. Uh, the actual rating in 1987, 26 today would be at least 2750. Without making much, let's say. So, okay, that's what he said. Knight goes to e5. Correct defense by pinning the knight. Queen e6. Now, what to play? If you go 97 now, which looks good, why do we play f4? And now suddenly, queen ending. But this queen ending, white has a great chance to win because he has a passed ball. I believe that with very, very good defense, black would probably keep it. But what do you prefer if you are black to play this position or to continue to play this position? Very difficult decision to make over the borders. But on the other hand, that's why chess is a difficult big game because we are forced to make decisions. In every move, we have to make decisions, decisions, decisions. And that's it's very annoying and very tiring on the way. We don't make so many decisions in all our life. And in suddenly in one game we have to make four decisions which might affect what will go on. It's very difficult. Of course, the analysis, you can make as many mistakes as you like. But here is an actual game. So he prefers to wait, forced now. Otherwise, there is no improvement. OK, he play up and down a little bit. <laughs> Now he wants to go with the knight on f5. Suddenly you see that uh, white pieces gets a little bit improvement. Eh? The knight is more aggressive. The queen is coming to work out. Uh, at least we can say that white makes the maximum he can from this position. And now black also shows that why he was so great player. King f7, perfect defense. Prevented by activating the king. Okay, they play up and down. Uh, okay, king e6 again was the best defense. Uh, like this here. But he thought after king e5, like this. Gurevich thought that he has a very good chance to win the game. But uh, unfortunately, the computer finds. Uh, Knight h5, which says is a very easy draw. Black should hold. But it's very difficult to fight this knight h5 during a game. Both thought that they had to play knight e8, when after like this, uh, white is clearly better. But the difference with the knight on e4 is that white doesn't have king e3 because bound on g2 is hanging. He wins one or two critical turns. Difficult to calculate over the game. But still, black is okay. You can't really lose. Okay, what to do now? 
it's obvious that sooner or later white should accept that an exchange will take place because black is defending wealth. And now it was black time to go for this because after 94, it's quite holdable position. Uh, black will win the pack, the pound only six, and two to one with knights. I don't think the black will have very big trouble to draw the game. But okay, he played queen f7, g4. There is no other way to improve the pieces. What uh, why I think here? If I cannot improve more the pieces, I have the queen and knight good, no big deal, cannot become better. Uh, most of the endings are drawish if I exchange one piece. So why not create an attack? It's my extra pawn and the king. It can be active. It's a plan. So that's how he makes the plan. He went like this, king g2, g5. The best defense now, according also to Rilke, is knight d7. Light squares are the control, centralization. Maybe you didn't notice it, but uh, Gurevich in this game, uh, uh, he was playing with his pieces centralized. Actually, I remember that it was uh, it was an obsess in the Soviet Union, uh, and Gurevich is a product of the Soviet Union, okay? School, Soviet school, uh, Union school, I don't say about anything else. Uh, it was an obsession with the center. Somehow I remember that uh, while I was in the, in the classroom, in the winning school, like you are sitting now, it was uh, Goofel given us uh, uh, a lesson. I'm talking about the sense, so I raised my hand. And I said, Master, I like to play for G3 and Bishop G2 and stuff like this. No, not so much of the sense. Goofel was really angry, he said, get up. Going on and get up and say, go to the corner, stay with your back to us until you understand you have to play in the center. <laughs> I feel, you know, I was 18 and uh, I felt like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, in this school, uh, you don't have an option. Either you do what they tell you, either you get the first flight home. Simple. So I went uh, in the corner, I stayed for about two hours, <laughs> Kersing. <laughs> you know what the hell I'm doing here with this stuff. And Goofel was continuing speaking about the sandal and telling me, do you hear about the sandal? <laughs> you have to learn this. <laughs> OK, I told you, it was um, difficult, but OK, the guy was right. doesn't matter. Even if you play G3, Bishop G2, you still want to play against the sandal. I mean, you have to care about the sandal. Or if you don't have the sandal, you have to hit the sandal. I mean, everything that goes around the sandal is normal. At that time, he was understanding chess. I was a patcher. This was the truth. What can I tell? But he, he made me understood it in the hard way, <laughs> not the educational way, let's say. He didn't try to explain me. He was simply say, guy, I cannot lose my time with you. Either you understand it or either go home. I mean, you're hopeless. <laughs> what can I do with you? OK, this was a different approach. So, uh, Knight of Faith, now this check is strong. Now, critical position. Obviously, White, after many, many moves, which made his opponent tight also. Don't forget that who loves to defend on this uh, position uh, for so many moves? Nobody. He makes a mistake, losing the game. He had to fight with uh, knight uh, e7. And after check, here, here, and the game continues. I think that white has good chances. He will play knight f4, king h5, slowly push the pawn. Still, he has a lot of threats. But knight a7 is losing directly after this very nice maneuver. Because the problem is that he's in Chuxwang, there are many uh, 
ways, especially on the light squares, which the check will be deadly. So what to do? Here is to cover the check. For example, like this doesn't work after the check. This was the idea. It Queen F7. Queen F7. Check. Queen F8. Check or C6. Forget it. Knight F8. Queen takes F8. Yes. You go to the ending which you lose. And you lose, you know why? Uh, I believe without... Uh, I think you have to choose one. When you move, I go King G6. And surely that's lost. So, he went Queen C2. And suddenly, with this nice maneuver, Queen F3. Uh, Black had a stone, but he's two swap again. Because A8 and the fate is the two critical squares that is controlled. So here he thought and he resigned. Because, uh, for example, the check, again, final two swap. He doesn't get any move. What to play? If you go somewhere to A7 or A6, they say, oh, now nice, Queen F7 and finito. I'm trading mates everywhere. Knight H7. What? Knight H7 was the one. Of course, that was a critical start. But after all, why to won the position? Uh, Topalo Anad was a very interesting uh, thing. Okay. Uh, that was from the, the game uh, they played in uh, Sofia, the World Championship in 2010. Uh, it was not an easy position. Many people thought it was draw. Easy draw. Which is not the correct evaluation. You can say that can be draw, but on a very hard way. The logic move was bishop c6. He should try like this. <coughs> then what to play? King f6 is the right way. Now back again. And f5. And this is the critical position of the variation arise. Uh, white has the threat of a winning plan. King goes to g7 and f6. Yes? Or first to play f6 and then king to g7 and then you will play f7 and win again. So black has to be active. h6. Uh, there are many things to do, but the only the good one is king f6. Now like this. And go king e5. f6. Move it. You don't go anywhere. Why I play this? I want to use square c5 for the king. Now like this again. H4, just do something. H3. Looks like winning, huh? Isn't it? Remind you anything in this place. It needs a very identical to a very, very famous game. That you know for sure. Number one, they have it. Mats, first game. Where uh, he said gave the bishop take h2, the move. See, there's nothing new under the sun. So what to play now? King is six, let's say. There are two ways to draw for black here. The technical one, which is b6, a5, because king b6 loses. By this. But the point is, 
after B6, A, B6, A5 draws. You remember why? Why, why draws? Why? Come on, guys. Palm goes to a 3, take it, king take B6. Wrong color. Palm has nothing to play. Technical. And the other one is king B5. Go back. What to do next? Only waiting, draw again, so on, you cannot do it. But you can remember the first one. So actually, this position, if you take it from the black side of you, can be drawn. But how to be drawn? You have to know one, two, three, four positions. You have to remember the game, identical positions, pass key. I know the analysis. This, this, this. Difficult, eh? But OK, what do we expect from our world champions? We expect them to to know them. That's why they are world champions. But let's see what happened. Anand played bishop c6, and after king h6, king g8, g4, suddenly he resigned. Why he resigned? He regained the corrected games he might be thinking, and realized that he has no defense. He lost it, and he plays bishop c6, and he found the game and resigned. Because the plan is bishop g7, g5, g6. I take, the king cannot go to f7 to f8, I go to e6, and I collect all the pawns, or the, uh, the bishop. For example, bishop d7, like this. The only move g6 is the draw. Bishop e8, 4, choose one. Bye bye. First he didn't see, but in G4 he see the plan. So the schematic thinking was very important here to find the plan of uh, of White to understand how he has to defend. After Bishop C6 he cannot defend the H pawn with the Bishop, and he has to find all these ways which are not easy to make the draw. Many people commented that. Anand lost a draw, uh, lost draw position. Two very simple words to describe what happened. Very simple. Somebody would think, ah, our best guy lost the draw position. What is this? On the other hand, you know what effort would take to draw this, this position. You can lose this because it's a battle. Even if you ask the computers what's going on, let's ask our computer. What is his opinion here? If we'll ever find a draw. Well, at least my computer gives king e8 or bishop e2, but not bishop c6. <laughs> After bishop c6, he immediately finds the win. Easily. But my computer is well trained. <laughs> I will tell you. <laughs> I don't fit him if he doesn't work. <laughs> Good for him. So he knows immediately he found the win. After g4, yeah, he doesn't say change. But for example, this position, he thinks that uh, I'm just wondering if in this position, after king e6, okay, he finds king b5 as the easy draw. And he thinks that b6 is losing, uh, but maybe it is too heavy. If we help him a little bit after b6, a5, which he doesn't find, now he found, he found draw. We have to help him a little bit because usually the computer doesn't find many things after six moves. But now he found, he found easily that it's draw. So even computer can found some things. Uh, a painful loss. Uh, Anand, uh, in his uh, youth, he worked also with uh, Gurevich. And um, usually in 1992. And uh, they were trying to master the schematic vision. So, in this position, uh, this one, you see that black has two extra pounds. So the position should be certainly winning, despite the opposite color bishops. However, 
Kau tu What is the correct feeling of the pollution? It's a nice thing also for you to try to find out. Because actually, if you don't have schematic thinking here and you try to work with variations, probably you will not find it. You have to identify where the pieces must be. What am I threading? Where I have to put the piece? And we don't have so many pieces. Problem is bishop on f1. If you understand this, he says, the calculation is primitive. Why? It's the only schematic thing. Uh, black bishop on d5 or a2, white plays king d3, attack the pawn. So you can't place the, the bishop on d5 or on a2. Because king d3, what are you going to do with the pawn? Not much. Any, in any other line, white plays the king to c4. You can't go king d3. So the only way to win this position is bishop on f1 and chukswak because you can't move the bishop. It's e1, check. In this time you make your bishop on e1, chukswak. So you have to move the king. So you go king b5 and you win. Because your opponent will not let you go king c4 and uh, king b5 and make a pawn. He doesn't want to lose. So he understood this. Uh, he said that around found the middle. You see? Winning scheme is achieved. B6 chooks one. Over. You only have to think schematic, find where I have to put the pieces. In the initial position, as we said, your uh, idea is correct. We have to go king b5, b6, a5. But how to do it? When we move the bishop, he goes king c4. I'm sorry, you don't go in. When you go the bishop on d5 or a2, attack the pawn. I'm sorry, you cannot do it. So we have to find where I have to put my pieces in order that he cannot do that. And finally you find it. The bishop belongs to f1 and he is to one. That's what you have to find in this position. You don't have to calculate. You have to, be, to play schematic the position. Where I have to put the pieces. In that game we have to learn the schematic approach. to thinking in that game. Take your time, as we say. So, the two really uh, advices in uh, the end game is schematic thinking and do not hurry, as we saw from the game of, uh, with Anderson. There is no way to hurry in this position.